Hello, welcome back. We are, I am, not we, I am on my way to the fabric store to go and pick up some faux leather for a belt that I'm going to make later on today. Um, if you watched the Pete Dunn videos, I talked a little bit about leather, fake leather, should I say, um, and the differences between it, the differences in quality and um, the jobs it does and the stretch and the stiffness of it and all that kind of stuff so I thought instead of the tool tip that I was going to do I might run through making of a belt of a custom belt um, yeah so this is the introduction to what will be hopefully making a belt uh, it's going to be a drawstring belt rather than a pop stud belt. I do two different types, drawstring and pop stud. This is going to be a drawstring. So, enjoy. Okay, so we're back out, it's a short trip, and um, we've got our fabric, uh, and I've managed to find, which I haven't found in here before, because there's two sections of faux leather in there, which I didn't realise there was, I always go to the first one. What I've happened to find is this black, really strong, really no stretch at all, black fabric which was five pounds fifty a meter which is you know great I mean this is perfect um, kick pad material perfect for belts you could even possibly get a knee pad out of it knee pads are slightly different because of the stretch because you need to stretch around the foam but this is really good fabric and it's got a nice backing on it as well so your adhesive, any adhesive that you put is gonna is going to glue onto that so i bought a meter of that if i just show you close up there really nice good fabric i'm pleased with that um, and like i say it's really really sturdy and that's what you want for a belt but i won't go over how to make a belt here and now in the car we'll go over how to make a belt back in the shop so i have to finish a day at work and then i have to go and have dinner and then I will be in the shop. So, see you in a minute. Bye. Okay, here we are. It's 20 past eight. I'm back from work. I've been for a carvery. I'm all full of vegetables. I'm ready to start work. So, the, um, the, the faux leather that we bought earlier on. And I've done a little bit of work just off camera. And that is as much as just cutting a rough shape like this you want to cut more cut over what you need uh, don't try and cut it to exact because you're gonna to have to trim it up anyway I've done that four times because we're gonna double layer we're gonna double layer the leather so we've got two layers of that so it's nice and sturdy and on top of that we're going to put the white and then on top of that there will be another black strip which will go down the middle but we'll do that one once we've cut the actual belt out so that's our red belt and we also have a black one to do so again two pieces of faux leather and this time a red once these are all stuck together um, I'll then lay the two inch hold on hold on hold on one of my favorite tools is the two inch ruler two inch deep ruler um, and that is what I use as the belt so that's a perfect belt size uh, so yeah that will be laid on top you're gonna get some waste it's just one of those things you can't help that uh, this has got a heat and bond backing, if you remember from the Pete 
Pete Dunn video, we put the heat and bond. This will stick to the what to the first piece of faux leather, and then we will have another piece which will stick onto there. So when you turn it over, you have the black on the back, you have the red on the front. I've also off camera done this, which will be the belt loops. So again, it's two, it's two pieces of faux leather and then a white top because all the belt loops for both of these belts, belts are white. So that's going to be cut and shaped into belt loops. But the next step will be to glue all these pieces together and for that I will cut because it's, you know it's not really interesting just watching me glue pieces of material together so I will come back when all these are glued together and then we will cut out the actual belt okay good Could have glued it could have used a contact adhesive or a double-sided but the problem with that is it's it's going to gum up your needle when you come to sew it because once we've cut this we've got to sew it and it would have gummed up my needle if i'd have sewn that uh, if i'd have glued it with glue so the heat and bond it's a bit slower but it gives a better finish as well because because it's you heat pressing it i don't know whether you can see that but it goes lovely and flat and you can see the shine on it as well. I mean, that's, you know, really nice shine and it works the same with the white. Can't see so much on the white, but you get the idea. Um, I'm really happy with this, this leather. Um, it's so strong, so stiff. It's really, really good. I'm going to use that from now on for belts. It's really good. So the next thing what we have to do is cut the actual belt out now I think I've done enough I think I've done enough Ooh, just about so we're looking at 38 inches we're slightly off but it doesn't matter because we're going to add ends on this anyway so we can um, put the drawstring in so next step is to cut these out so I'll stand up you're still going to hear me but you won't be able to see me and I can move the table so I've got my ruler it's 39 inches long 100 centimeters and it's two inches deep and that's the ideal measurement so what I'm looking to do now is we'll put it slightly off the edge and this is why we don't cut these parts to size you are, like I say, you are going to get a lot of waste, but we'll be able to use it again, um, whatever we don't use. So, lay it down using a rotary cutter. Hold and trim. Now you really want to be very careful. You've got to find a balance between putting too much pressure, too much pressure on the cut that it moves the ruler but not putting enough pressure that it will um, it won't cook through. You want to try and do it in one go. You don't want the ruler to move. I'm not sure how good this is coming out on video, but we'll go from there. So in the next one, we're going to cut the other side. I may get in the way of the camera here, because the camera's where I want to be. So I'm going to cut the other side, holding it firm, trying not to 
move the ruler as we go. And what we are left with, oh, there we go, that, that's not putting enough pressure on, but we can see the groove and we can just run the blade in. Okay, and what we are looking for is that. And that is the makings of a belt. We've got a nice black back, we've got three layers. It's not gonna break when it's pulled, when it's pulled around in a ring, it is not gonna break. Hopefully not, anyway. We'll repeat the process now on the second one. So again, exactly the same as we just did. Offer your ruler up. Uh, and then we'll cut that out. Sorry, just uh, concentrate there for a moment. Okay, go back onto the other side, and then we can cut the other side. Nice, firm, but gentle pressure on the ruler keeping the rotary blade nice and straight. Don't let the rotary blade wander. These are your, these are your finished edges and you'd want them to be just right. Okay, and what we have is another one. So we have one and two edges. Two nice belts. Nice and strong, nice and thick, good quality, feels good quality. Well, you have to remember with, um, with, can you see me? Well, you have to remember with um, anything that you make with gear, you're gonna, you're gonna do all your very best on the gear. You're gonna do the best quality, you're gonna do the best stitching, you're gonna make sure everything's on and sewn down and glued and fixed. But the second you've put in a post, your brain's gonna instantly think, have I done that right? Have I done it strong enough? Have I messed anything up? Have I missed anything? You're gonna think that, and I think that every time. Even though I know I haven't, I still think it. And then if you get to have your gear on TV, um, you get an added level of stress. Because when you actually see it being used and called and thrown around and picked up and dragged by, you instantly think, oh, please don't rip, please don't break. So this might seem overkill, all these layers, but when someone's lifting somebody up by this, you want it to be as strong as possible. I mean, if it breaks at the end of the day, it is only uh, fabric, so you know, you've got to give some, but you don't want it to break. That's what I'm saying. And if it's live, if your gear is live, like one of the very first things I ever made um, for Trend 7 and Tyler Bay, Mustache Mountain, was on a live NXT event, and I couldn't even watch it. My, my heart was in my throat. I just couldn't watch it. So, might seem a little excessive, but you know, you want quality and you want strength, especially with something like this, because this is a this is a handhold. This is a point for someone to hold, to lift, and to pick up. This is an important part, and this, as you can see, isn't gonna isn't gonna even stretch. Never mind break. So next step, we're gonna sew it. Um, I want a time lapse on that because it's you know we've got to go all the way down here and all the way down here. Then we'll finish the ends. Um, and then we can start, oh no, we'll sew these, then we've got to put the black strip in the middle. Don't forget we have black here, but I actually no, I'll use a fresh piece because we don't want it to get too thick. Um, but yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get to the sewing machine. What I have on the machine now, I've changed my needle to a leather needle. I know it's not real leather, but this is really thick and you really need, you, need, you, need, you need the right needle. I've got my foot pressure on two, I've got my thread tension on five and a half, five and a half, six. I have a center straight stitch. I have my stitch, stitch width at 3.5 and I have my stitch length maximum to five. 
because you don't what you don't want to do is create perforations if when you're doing a straight stitch you um, you have you have the stitch too close together what you're actually doing is creating perforations like a stamp um, and it's likely to tear down those perforations so I've put the, st the stitch length to maximum so we get nice big long stitches and it doesn't create a perforation we're just going to do a standard, um, a standard stitch. I'm going to. How far in am I going to go? Now I do have a. In fact, I have a tip. I just thought this is a standard foot, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to replace it uh, for. If I can, if I can find it, my open toe. Foot. The open toe foot obviously is what we use to applique the designs on. So you can, um, it has two, it has an opening in the middle, so you can see where you're going. If you have a standard foot, it's closed off, you can't see what's going on underneath. With an open toe, you can see what's going in. But I'm going to use this because it gives this nice edge. You can run this edge along the base of the leather, this inside one, I'm sorry I'm showing you and you can't even see, you can run it in on the inside edge like this and it gives you a nice guide otherwise you're just eyeballing it and it's also a nice distance from the edge, you don't want to go too close to the edge and you don't want to come too far in, too close to the edge the stitches are likely to slip, too far in this edge is going to fold over and you're going to get rolling and curling, you don't want that. So, I'm going to do one run and then I will time lapse the rest. Oh, and also I've got, um, sorry, oh, hang on, we're tangled, we're tangled. Hang on a moment, let me try that again. Let me try that and just um, make sure that you don't have your, your thread. Tangled. Just going to. Uh, this machine has an automatic feeder, which is brilliant. So my top stitch is red because we have a red top. Because we have a black bottom, we have a black bobbin, bottom thread. They're both the same, exactly the same thickness and brand manufacturer of thread. So I don't. So I can use them different colours together. Probably wouldn't work so well if you used two different thicknesses of thread. But anyway, so. I'm going to line my my foot with that, and I'm going to start to go. Now, slow and steady. You can speed up there you go, but start off nice, slow and slow and steady. And I am keeping the edge, keeping the edge of the um, the foot on the tip. I tell you what I'll do. I'll move the camera, and we'll have a proper look. Okay, so it's not possible to get a very good angle um, at what I'm doing. This is about the best I can do with the setup that I have. I don't have um, I don't have a proper setup yet with tripods and things. I do need to in invest. But as you can notice, I have the edge of the foot, the needles in, and I'm now going to take it nice and slow, back stitching. You can hear that it's not. Okay, so this is going to be, oh, okay, so we seem, we've, already we've got a snag, I've got a feeling we, um, we might have to change some settings. I'm going to troubleshoot this problem and I'm going to be back. Problem solved. Um, I was worried then for a minute that the 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 leather I've picked was too too thick and it wasn't allowing the needle to go through. It did that chewing up a couple of times then. Didn't film that because I needed to figure out what it was. Uh, I actually ended up peeling the back off because I thought it was too thick. So I thought if I take one side off, but it did, still did it. And then I realised that I hadn't. Um, fed my sewing machine properly. So there you go, all these years of sewing, 
and I forget a simple step like that. So we're back. I've stitched one edge. You can see that. And now it sews. But now I have the, the pain in the bum that I, I peeled it off. But we're gonna just, we're gonna go for it anyway and then I'll have to just trim off the edge. I'm cutting to the front, I'm sewing to the front, sorry, so it'll still be the same size. All I have to do is just trim off the back where it's stretched as I pulled the fabric. So right, right, drama over, let's carry on. So I'm keeping, I'm not looking at my needle. I don't know if you can hear me properly. When you um, when you sew, don't look at the needle. The needle the needle doesn't go anywhere. The needle will always fall in the same place. You need to be looking at where the edge of your fabric is lining up to. And in, in this case, I'm lining it up to to the right hand side of that open toe. That's the bit I'm looking at. I'm letting the machine feed. I'm not pulling it. I'm not stretching it. I'm not fighting it. I'm just letting the machine pull. All I'm doing is guiding it. Now, if you've cut nice and straight, there isn't much guiding to do. But you need to just take your time. When you get to the end, take your time, go right to the end, and in. We're not gonna back stitch because um, we don't need, because we're gonna put an end on the, this is gonna, there's gonna be an end on this anyway. Right, I'm gonna do the next one. And then we'll go back to the table and we'll start that again. I'm kneeling down because I'm really struggling to get decent camera angles. I think I need to invest in it. In a better tripod. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just trim these um, these ends straight, and we can do that by just offering them up to a straight line on the horizontal, with a, just a slight overhang onto a vertical. There, we can take our ruler, put it across, and cut. And that just gives us a nice clean edge. We'll do the same with the other side. We need to go slightly out on that one because the second layer of leather is shorter than the other side. So cut. Okay. Now it's cut like that. So now we have, we have a belt. It is it is too short for what for what I need. Um, I know it's too short for what I need, but it doesn't matter because we've got to add we've got to add a section onto here anyway um, to put the, the drawstring on. So we can we can make up the, the space with that. Um, but this one I want to kind of make them the same. So we'll do the the, ed the first edge the same way just by lining up the horizontal cutting the vertical and then we'll get we'll just line these up because we want them to be the same the same length so when I make the ends I can just make four ends um, offer the whole thing up and this way as well. And bear with me a moment. Let me just concentrate on this part. Then if I offer that to there, and then I can cut that off. And what we have now is two. Can we see? It's not the greatest angle. We have two belts ready to have the ends put on, but first, there's a black piece in the middle because this red and white is just a stripe. Um, it's actually just a stripe that goes across the uh, top and bottom of a black strip. So I'm gonna come back when that's done because there is no point um, sitting there watching that because it's exactly the same way. All I'm doing is cutting a strip uh, and 
Right, here we are. So I decided to go ahead and do this bit just off the camera because it's, it's exactly the same way as we did it before. We just cut some black uh, leather, we backed it in the heat and bond, we ironed it, we cut it to size, we laid it on and then pressed it. I keep saying we, me, I, there's no we. I work, I, uh, I work on my own, I don't know why I keep saying we. So there you go, two nice belts. Now you might be thinking that, you know, this is a lot of work, it's a lot of time, but you know, when someone's taking your, when you're taking somebody's money, you know, they expect some quality. And I try to do everything the best quality I can. Now that is, you know, that's a belt, you know. Nice black back, white front, black stripe, stitched nice and equal i've still yet to stitch this on um but i thought i'd just try and work the ends before i stitch that bit because what i have is all this this scrap from the when we cut the belts out so i'm thinking that i can use this as an end piece Oh, I can definitely use this as an end piece. Now on the drawings from the customer, it's just a straight, it's just a straight edge, um, nothing fancy. Um, I think I'm going to go for this one. Let's see if I can get four, but I do need to make sure I can get four ends out before I do this. So it starts to narrow here. So I'm just going to cut that off like that. Um, I keep these upright because if I lay it like this, I have potential to pick that up as a piece of scrap and cut it. So, I've got this. So we're going to try and make the ends now. Uh, I have a rotary cutter, I have an X-Acto blade, I have a sharpener, scissors, a square, and a soft tape. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to measure how long these are. So I know a customer is a 38 waist, so this is 37. So we wanna, I wanna add on, I'm probably gonna go two inches on each end. Do I wanna go two inches on each end or do I wanna go one inch on each end? No, two, two inches on each end. That will give me, that'll give, well, that'll give the customer an inch to play with. Plus it'll be a drawstring anyway, so we can pull it tight. Okay, so how am I going to best to do this? We just basically need to square this up. Um, yeah, we need to square this up. So I'm going to square this up. I'm going to measure. This is these are inch squares. Um, so I know that two inches is two of these squares, as you can see there. Sorry about that. Oh, on the last clip that you just saw and I just cut off, my battery died. Can't go back and redo. So yeah, if you were just wondering why I just cut why I stopped talking in mid-sentence. And it looks like it's gonna go again. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna get on with this quick. So I probably cut to a little time lapse now. You don't need to see every last step of this, but what I'm gonna do is cut two inches. I'm gonna cut four two inch squares. That's right, four two inch squares. We'll have an inch to angle over and an inch will go on, is that right? Yeah, I'll work it out and you'll see it in the time lapse. completed the following steps so I've I've stitched the black stripe on I've used a zigzag stitch didn't need to use a zigzag zigzag stitch because it's not a stretch fabric but it just looks nice it looks better like that plus you've got the straight stitch then the zigzag zigzag then the straight it looks nice and plus it also looks nice from the back you get like a nice pattern on the back as well which is cool 
The ends I have done and stitched. There's a little bit of tidying up to do here on the edge and threads have got to be taken off. But that kind of goes like this. And then this is where the, um, the eyelet holes will go. So I get to use my new eyelet tool, which is a really cool tool, which I'm gonna do a video about as well. Um, yeah, so that's really it, same on the red. That's today's work done. Uh, again, you, you know, it, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of steps, you know. Most, some people might think that there's a lot of unnecessary steps, but, you know, like I say, people deserve to have um, good quality gear. Um, and there's no good making good quality trunks, tights, singlet, whatever, if you, you know, you're gonna mess up on the accessories. So yes, yeah, so that's more or less two hours work. Uh, I don't think it's bad, quite good. So I'm actually calling it a night. Obviously for you, it will be the next frame, we'll be back. Uh, and that'll be tomorrow night, uh, which we will then get the eyelets in and the drawstring and finish off. And that's it, that's making a belt. I mean, obviously, you know, that's making a belt of this pattern. There are, you know, any depends on what pattern you want. This might need a bit more of a fancier shape, but on the drawing from the customer, it was a square. As I say, I've just got to do a little bit of trimming. It doesn't hurt just to trim these little edges. This side's okay. And I think we're okay on the red. Doesn't seem to be any overhang on the red. Any, there might be a little bit here, but I'll snip all that off tomorrow and then get rid of all these threads so we can burn them out. But yeah, nice solid belts, good to thick quality, not gonna go anywhere. And that is, oh, let's get a better shot. That is tonight's, trying to get a good shot. I might get a thumbnail out of this. Okay, there we go. Two lovely belts, black and white, black and red. Okay, on to the next step, which for me will be a night's work, for you will be instantaneous eyelids. Here we are back again. It's another day for me, another night. Nine o'clock, just finished watching uh, NXT UK. We had, uh, if you jump onto my, or you've probably already seen on my Instagram by now, uh, we had Eddie Dennis and Trent Seven uh, wearing gear tonight, which was cool. So I've just got back up from watching that and we're back on the belt. So we're going to add the eyelets in the, in the end of this. There's gonna be three eyelets in each one. But quickly before we do that, I'm just going to show you the diff. This is my old eyelet point, eyelet setter, should I say? I'm using this as an eyelet punch at the moment. This is okay. It kind of works. As you can see, it's got different sizes on the um, on the end there, and it's got a little metal plate there. And then when you squash the fabric, it just makes a hole. Uh, it's okay. It is going to be re replaced. By the, by the same company that make this. But uh, yeah, for now this is the hole punch. This is my current eyelid setter. Well, it was my current eyelid setter. And this is absolute trash. Okay, I'm just gonna say that right now. This has just been the bane of my life, having to use this. It is such a faff. You put the eyelid on there and you press. It doesn't fit together, it doesn't grip. The metal bends. This, this is going like this. Look, this is this. Okay, that's that. That's the last time I'm ever dealing with that. Because what I have now is this beautiful eyelid setter. Now look at that. That is a proper big boy, big pants eyelid setter. Comes in two parts. It goes in there. And you give it a whack and you join eyelids together nicely. We're going to do that on here, but this 
Uh, I'm so pleased with this. It's such a solid, fantastic tool, and I'm really pleased. And they also do an eyelid punch, so this is going to go the way of that in the next few days when I order myself a proper eyelid setter. Along with my new eyelid setter, I got my new fancy eyelids, which are just a thousand times better than what I've been using before. So I'm really, really pleased with these. And we'll see, you'll see how neat they are. It's a bit blown out with the light. Can I do that? There you go. Really cool. So let's get on. So this stage is pretty simple, really. We need to cut three holes in the fabric. And I'm gonna sort of rough, what I like to do is just slightly touch it, um, and it gives you a little a little indent. It's just so you can mark, match everything up nice. And we're gonna do this by eye, there's no point measuring this. So I'll just uh, do that now. You can have a little look and I can see that the center one is slightly up, so we can move it over. When you're happy with the position, we can then grip and squeeze. And you can hear a little, a little pop. You see, it, do, it does work, but it's just not, it's not great. So I'm gonna punch out the rest of the other three holes. Just take my time, be careful that, because once you've done this, if you mess it up, you gotta do it all again. So cut and then just a little wriggle which just takes the eyelid and then in and squeeze okay and what we have is three holes ready to go we're going to repeat on the other side and how we do that is we can just hold the other one against against it so it's held against itself we can put the, the, the setter through, sorry, the punch through each hole. Just a little light squeeze because you want to check it. Yep, that look okay. Again, squeeze, little wriggle. Now you might be thinking that this seems to this tool seems to be working fine. It's working so well because this is a stiff, a stiff fabric. So it's got a lot of bite to it, but when you're doing this through spandex, it doesn't it doesn't tend to work very well. So what we've got now, holes. We'll repeat. I'll repeat the same on the next one, and I'll cut to that in a second. And here we are. All six holes are cut. They're all done and dusted time to put the eyelids in. So for this we need a hammer. This as well is the wrong hammer. Um, it's a bit too aggressive for this. Not really ideal. You, um, you're supposed to use uh, what's called a hide hammer but I don't use skins so I won't be getting one of them but I will be getting a small rubber mallet which will do just as well um, for this. But for now this is okay. I just, this one's likely to, to mess up the end, but that's okay. This is a solid piece of cast steel. It's not gonna, it's, it's not gonna do much damage. I'll probably break the hammer before I break that, to be honest. So, how do we do this? We start by which side is the, the good side. And on this, you can see there's two sides. There's a little, sort of mushroomy sticky out bit and then you got the nice flat top. The flat top goes through the hole. It's a little bit of a tight fit. You want it to be a slightly smaller uh, fix. You don't want it to be baggy inside the hole. As you can see it fits in like that so it's nice. Then that that face, the the uh, good the good side sits inside this, inside this little jig, and you'll feel it, if you kind of, uh, you'll feel what it's in, it'll kind of sit in. And once it's in, you take this one, this side, which is, um, 
the piece that latches on and that's got uh, a good side and it's got this side with little teeth on it the teeth are uh, actually I've not seen teeth on these before so this this is why I chose these because it's a really good those teeth really bed into the fabric that goes on top of there like like that and then you put this pin through the hole through the hole underneath and then you kind of want to just feel to make sure that everything's lined up and then straight and I normally do four blows like that. and what that does it joins that it joins that and it just makes a lovely hole that is not gonna go anywhere I'm gonna give that another tap because I think it's four taps if I'm, if I'm doing it through spandex, it's probably a little bit more through this. So we can give it another, another two. There we go, that's got it. So yeah, just need to be a bit more aggressive with this because it's thicker. So that's that, I'm gonna do one more and then we'll either time lapse or cut till these all done. You don't need to see, sit there and watch me hammering that through. So we'll do once more. Take the longer cap, the longer end, push that through on the good side, like that, through the hole. It's a little, so it's a little bit stiffer on this because it, it is, there is quite a lot of layers. Okay, and we take the back part, sit that over there. We sit the whole thing into the, the, the jig which receives it put the pin through sort of you'll feel that if it's in or if it's not see I don't think that's quite in there we go that feels better and then bang okay so yeah it looks like five good and there's two we'll now speed this up and see what the next step is after that So now, before we add the drawstring in, I'm just going to take care of a, a few little bits. Now, all these little threads, I find the best way to deal with them is burn them. Just be careful, and you just want to you just want to kiss kiss them with the flame. Don't hold it on. So you just need to do that. I mean, it's only thread. It's not gonna it's not gonna take much to burn it off. Uh, I just find that's just the best way at the end, just to take care. Be careful if you do this on white, um, because you can tend to leave a little little mark on the white. But as you can see, that just takes care of those those little threads. Um, just you'll you'll be used to how this how it does this. It's, uh, I mean, obviously it's a simple thing, just burning or something, but um, you don't want to be in a position where you actually melt something, because if you had to do all this again, for the fact that you burnt the gear that you were working on, you're going to be pretty mad with yourself. Um, and I don't know if, if you're like me. Oh. Is this working? One second, let's just fill this up. There we go, that's better. I've never actually found a decent one of these. If anyone knows of a decent uh, fire lighter or oven lighter or whatever they're called, let me know. This is like the, I mean, this is literally the fourth one that I've bought. I only bought this the other day. They just don't seem to last. I don't know. Maybe it's me. But if anyone knows of a really good, decent make of these, 
stick it in the comments or go on Instagram and message me. Be much appreciated because I am fed up of. I mean, I don't. I think even this one's not working. I don't know. I only bought. I literally have bought this the other day. This is the first time I'm using it, so it doesn't seem to be working as it should. It'll do for now. Is that everything? Okay. Yeah, that's everything. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take care of any overlaps. We've got none on that one. There's a tiny little one here. Just a little tiny thing. Might not seem much, but for the fact of... For the sake of just nicking it off, I'm just going to use the rotary blade and I'm just going to sneak up on it. Don't just go all in and cut it because you might cut too far. Just um, slowly sneak up. Okay, so just trim that edge. The worst one, obviously, was on the white, but that's because it's white, and you can see white more than you can black. So we'll just do a little nick. Okay, that's got that nice. Just be careful that you don't cut any threads or uh, anything like that. We've got a little one on the end here. Be very careful with that one because it's a very small one. Just nicking it, nick it there. There we go. Okay, so that's, um, yeah, that's the construction, but now we just need to um, assemble them. Uh, it's really weird, I'm back to front in the picture, in the, in the video screen, I'm trying to grab something, I'm the opposite way around, it's a bit weird. Um, okay, so now we're going to add the string in, so if you bear with me. Uh, one second, let me just go and grab that. And this is what I use. It's um, by Brotree. Brotree? Yep, Brotree. Yeah, it is a uh, paracord. Uh, seven core, 550 pounds, and it's a four millimeter. That's important four millimeter it's really strong and why I like this is I use this for the, uh, the waistbands in all of my gear if it has a waistband trunks sing, um, trunks tights etc shorts because it will it'll flatten it'll it'll actually flatten when it's pressed not not completely flat but it won't it, so when it sits against the body a little bit more comfortable and it is really, really strong, really strong. So, I'm gonna work out how much we need. And we'll do that just by a rough, um, a very rough. There you go, four millimeter, just fits nicely in the hole. Or be really careful when you're buying eyelets. Um, I was being a little bit uh, naive when I bought this and bought the wrong one twice. Uh, make sure you get the right size and whatever eyelid you get, make sure that your cord matches that because it's a bit of a pain if you do that and then you don't have, um, you have to go and order it all again. And if you're like me, I don't like being stopped in the middle of work, if I'm in the middle of work. Right, okay, it's gonna be a bit of a pain. We'll do a little cut and I'll have this in and then we'll cut the other three and then we'll lace them up. But I will just not put you through me having to f feed this through the eyelids. Okay, so I've worked out the first one and I've cut it. Just give that a quick measure. Um, so it looks like in centimeters, uh, 75. Seven, 75 centimeters is enough to tie and to have a bit of slack as well. Right. With this, when you cut it, it frays. It frays a lot. And the more you mess with it, it tends to do this. You see? Where the white core 
slips out of the black core and it's really annoying and it frays, really, really frays. You can see that. Right, so back to your heater. Heater, fire lighter. Now, what you need to do is you need to heat seal the ends. I've already done it on this one. Oh, I haven't done this side. So, when you cut this cord, I'm just going to snip a tiny piece off. You need to squeeze just below what you're going to cut. Squeeze tight, then cut. And keep that pressure, because though, because all that wants to happen now is those white cores want to just fly out. Then, hold the flame on the tip until it begins to melt. Bravery test and just have to risk a little bit of heat and that just seals that end. Now, about an inch in, you want to, like a ro rotisserie, turn and heat. Not, you don't want it to split, you only want it to melt. Once it starts to melt, grab and twist like this. Okay, and twist. Now, doing that serves two purposes, and you can see now it's melted. The one purpose this goes is so you can feed it through the eyelet. It'll be impossible to fit through the eyelet if you don't twist that, and you don't get that hard melted plastic. The second one, uh, reason is this goes, it doesn't on this, but if, if you're using this on tights, you need to put in a toggle. Is that, you, is that the right word? One of these. Oh, that's a broken one. One of these. And I use these little tiny flat toggles because they sit against the body. They're not big, round, sort of painful, sort of lumps sticking inside peep wrestlers when they're wearing them. And to get it through that little hole, you need to reduce the size of this. And by heating it, and squeezing and rolling it, you reduce the size of the cord and it's able to slip through the toggle. We will put these on the belts, but you can take them off and just tie it. So, uh, no, we won't put them on, sorry. Rewind. We won't put them on the belts because the belt normally gets tied. These are for drawstrings, backs of kick pads, tights, trunks, shorts. So. Not today. This is all we need. So now, you just lace up as you would um, any other... Oh, no, let's cut, sorry. I need to cut three more. Three more, one more. I'm losing my brain tonight, it's late, I'm tired. So before I cut, squeeze, cut, heat the very tip, Melt the tip, watch it melt, brave the heat. Okay, if you burn yourself doing that, don't blame me. Okay, try not to get the plastic it's stuck to you because it's a bit like napalm and it kind of sticks to your uh, it'll stick to your skin. Heat it, roll it, let it go cool, brave the heat. Okay, oh, we've got to do the same with the other end. Squeeze, trim, melt, shape, and, and seal the end. Now the, the cores are not going to come out. And then evenly heat around the plastic until it starts melting. You'll see when it's melting, it'll start going like a liquid. Don't let it split. You can almost see there with the white coming through, I almost made that split. Don't make it split if you can help it, but that's okay, because we're going to put a, a, an aglet, an aglet. I'm pretty sure that's the right word, an aglet. We're going to put an aglet on the end of that, a lace end, like what you put on a lace. So, I'll lace up one, and then we'll cut back to the others. So, holding them together, we want to start in, on the first one, 
and on the other one. Feed them through the holes. It really is such a pleasure to have this oil etc. I mean, I, it's, I can't tell you the, the trouble I had with that cheap one, which is now going in the bin. And I can't wait to throw it in the bin. Okay, up. In. And in. Okay. Right. Okay. I'm going to do that again. I'm not even going to cut this out, so I'm going to leave that mistake in. Anyone notice what the mistake was? We need to go. Right, am I going to do this right this time? No, we need to come up on the first one. That was my mistake. See, it doesn't matter how many times you've done it. You can still, you can still mess it up. You can still mess everything up. I'm not, okay, then we go in. We want to end on the surface. I did it the wrong way around so that the, it was actually in the back. But I'm not going to cut that mistake out, we're going to leave it in. Warts and all. Because no matter how long you've been doing something, you're still going to mess it up. I think it was Peter Lyons uh, from Weta uh, that I watched that um, said, um, getting better at something is just failing less often. or making mistakes less often which is you know true about anything really you stop making mistakes you become better there we go that's what you want laced up so you have a cross at the bottom and then the tie when you tie it it'll cover the top it just gives a nice little finish i'm going to cut back once i've done the other one and then we'll put the aglets on and then we're done All done. Two belts laced up, looking good. I like it. It just gives, uh, I think these lace up belts just give a really professional kind of finish. It really just sets it off nicely. I really, uh, I really like I also do a pop stud type, which is again, is really good, really clean. So if you're looking for a clean belt, a pop stud is a way to go. And we'll do another one. When I get a pop stud belt, we'll do a quick run through on that. Right now we need to take care of these messy ends because you don't want to leave these ends horrible like this especially on the front I mean I don't leave these ends messy even when they're going to be tucked in you're never going to see them you know finish the job make things look as nice as you can. I hope this is showing up well on video apart from my mouth all you can seem to see is my mouth. Right so we're going to use agates here they are they are I am, I'm on the search actually for some better professional kind of uh, aglet installation kit like, like I did with the, the setter. But for now, these are okay. They, they, they're fine. They do the job. I've got all different colours in here. So I'm going to take. Because they're going to go on the front, let's use, let's use these kind of gunmetal gunmetal ones and all it is is kind of like a, a silver cap it's open and it's got holes and clips and I'll show you what we're going to do with those now I've got enough of the gunmetal one two three uh, four okay four gunmetal aglets okay uh, can I I'm just wondering if I can bring the camera in a little bit better. Um, as, I said, as I said earlier on in this video, I don't have the greatest camera setup yet. I need to invest. Uh, maybe that's a little bit better. Uh, and now it's wobbling. We're good. Okay, so. No, this isn't gonna do it. I'm gonna cut, we're gonna come to a better camera position. Hello. I'm here. That's better. Much better. So, here we are back. And I have the end of the cord. Okay. So, there's a groove in the aglet. 
you slip the cord. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do this and look at the camera and look at this at the same time. So bear with me. I will try to do this successfully. So we slip the cord inside the aglet and we kind of squeeze. And then on the end of the aglet, see this tiny little pin. What you want to do is take your nail and bend that down. Okay, like this. So it sits across. I'm, I'm very aware that it's not focusing on the aglet. Uh, let me try. There you go. So that little pin is it's gripped across. Now, using this, which was never intended to put on an aglet, but I found a great way to use this eyelet punch to install an aglet. Um, I'm looking at the aglet, by the way, not you. So, right, what you do now, on this groove side, so where this hole is, you start by pinching the first side in, then you take the other side and you pinch that in, you squeeze the top, and you turn it round and you've got these two flaps, oh, it's not focusing, you've got these two little flaps at the base, you pinch those in and then you squeeze, you go round and squeeze everything as flush as you can and tidy the top. Now I'm aware that's not the best way to show you this but it's really difficult to show you this and do it at the same time but you can can you see that it's not focusing very well okay so if I do this that seems to be a decent view I've closed it all in all the way around and all you can see is a little seam so what you actually get is a nice tidy end I'll do that once more and then we'll cut to the next one because I am aware that this isn't the best video. So slide the cord inside the aglet so it's right inside and squeeze. Okay. Then take the little the little tab, press it down with your nail so it locks across the aglet. Take this and pinch the top into the into the cord and pinch the second one onto the cord and then just tidy the top, turn it over and pinch the two flaps at the very base over which locks down the aglet and then work your way up just tidying and straightening. And what you're left if you've done it right is a nice clean, like I said this isn't the perfect, I, I would rather not do it this way but I haven't really found a system that's sort of professional. I want to find out where they do it. I mean, when you buy clothes, oh, uh, yeah, like oh yeah, it's a perfect example of what I'm looking for. See, what I want is you see that, you see how that's clean and uh, tidy, and that's the same ugly as these because you can see the little tab, you can see the line at the base, but that's obviously been put on with a machine because that is perfect, that's what I want. So that's the goal, maybe I'll, maybe somebody knows out there where I can get one of those. But for now, that's as best as I can do. And I think that's okay. Misusing tools, sometimes it works. Uh, this, once I get my proper eyelet punch, this is gonna be kept for aglets, because it is a perfect tool for that, I think anyway. So, so I'm going to do the next one, then we'll come back. And there we go. Done and done. All the aglets are on. Done and dusted. Eyelet holes done. Cord is in. And that is how I make a wrestling gear belt. Now the next, obviously the next stage is to make the belt loops, but we won't, I won't film that. That's, um, we'll, we'll show you that another time on another video. I think this has gone on long enough. That's how I make a belt. Tidy, neat, strong, thick, sturdy.
I think you'll find that's a pretty respectable belt for anybody. So yeah, there you go. Another video done. Thank you very much. Again, if you've sat through all this, uh, I'm not sure how long this is going to be yet because I haven't edited it. Uh, so yeah, thank you again for watching. Um, like I say, I do want to really push this this channel uh, as far as I can. I really want to get stuck into lots of things and lots of ideas and the things that we can do. Uh, so yeah, thank you again. Uh, subscribe if you wish to. Click the little bell. What else do you have to do? Like and I don't know and all the other stuff that you do nowadays on social media. And jump onto my Instagram, my Twitter, links in the description. I'm also going to leave a link for the the site where I bought this from. Uh, no sponsorship at all. I just really love this tool. So I'll leave a link to that. And I will leave a link for the cord that I use because I find I've tried a lot of cord and this is the best I find. They also do it in different colors as well. Um, lots of different types of colors. It's more of a survival rope. It's advertised as like a survival rope, you know, where you can make, I don't know what you make out of it. I'm not a survivalist, but you know, survival stuff with this. Uh, I'll leave a link to that as well. So yeah, thank you very much. Subscribe, like, bell icon, um, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.